Hey, my name is Chris Sturham. Welcome to another episode of Drinks from Eddie Miller's Noir Bar. Each week I take a chapter from the book Eddie Miller's Noir Bar, cocktails inspired by the world of film noir, and I talk about the film in that chapter and I make the drink associated with it. Today we are going to be looking at the film, the setup, and having the drink The Deschler. Now the setup was released in 1949. It stars Robert Ryan and Audrey Totter. Um, it's a boxing movie. And like many boxing movies, like most boxing movies, it looks at the seamy underbelly of, uh, of the sport of boxing. Um, and in the setup, the underbelly is probably more seamy than it is in most, most boxing movies. Um, basically, pretty much nobody in this, this film has a shot at the title and very likely none of them ever will have a shot at the title um, you have and that's one of the things that makes it kind of interesting because there's a whole probably half to two-thirds of the movie takes play, place in the locker room um, before the main fight uh, probably half the movie but it takes place in the locker room before the fight and you have uh, a fighter who is a young kid who it's his first professional bout and he's actually getting a little queasy just from hearing the stories of what happened in the previous fight. Um, you've got a guy who's been knocked out a gazillion times and he keeps talking about this one uh, middleweight who was knocked out so many times then went on to become the middleweight champion. So he thinks that maybe this is his time that he's going to get a chance to go on and and get a shot. Uh, the only the only character in the film that really has a shot at, at even coming close to the title at this point is uh, James Edwards, who plays an African American boxer, who um, he's he's at the top of his game and he's going back east to to fight there. So maybe if the brakes fell the right way, maybe he would get a a shot at the the title, but. Nobody else. It's not in the cards for anybody else. And most especially, it's not in the cards for Robert Ryan. Now, Robert Ryan is definitely at the end of his boxing career. Um, he, he, and he knows it. He doesn't have any illusions about that. But he's, his, his wife, Audrey Totter, who normally is a femme fatale in films like this, um, is support, well, not supportive of him because she wants him to quit, but... She wants to. She wants him to quit for all the right reasons because she she's afraid he's gonna get his brains ba beaten out. And and at this point in his career, that's actually a pretty real possibility. Um, but Robert Ryan thinks, you know, if I can just do this one more fight, maybe if I beat him, they'll have to do a rematch. I'll be up at the top of the bill rather than you know in the middle of the bill, and I can make some real money. And with that real money, I can retire. So that's kind of what's going on in the background with him, but a lot of the a lot of the other characters and what's going on with them is what real is really like the heart of this movie. Um, great, great fight scenes where um, with uh, with Robert Ryan, he's uh, was a collegiate boxer at Princeton and really knows how to take care of himself in the ring. Um, the story is, think of Robert Rank's character kind of like Butch in Pulp Fiction. Um, there's a fix on the fight, but the difference is instead of Butch knowing about it and winning the fight because he wants, he's got his bets down, um, with Robert Ryan, he has lost so many of his previous fights that his manager doesn't even tell him that the fix is in. And so he goes out to win the fight and his manager figures, hey, he's going to lose anyway, so why bother giving him money? So that's kind of what happens. And then it all goes bad and good and bad and, 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 and good, kind of. Anyway, um, the, the, the movie does not end well for Robert Ryan, but in a way, it, it ends in a way that kind of gives them a new lease on life and a chance for a normal life. And... And in a way, that makes it somewhat uplifting. Uh, um, Eddie Muller called it one of the bleakest endings, yet defiantly tri triumphant at the same time. And that's pretty right on the money. Now, the drink, the Deschler. It's, um, it's a take on the Manhattan. 
Uh, it was named after a boxer named Dave Deschler from the turn of the century. Apparently he had a great career from about 1903 to 1906 and then kind of hit the skids and had a long, long career after that where he, you know, just was like a middle of the road boxer trying to make it. And um, he, I, Eddie Muller put his, uh, his final record in the book and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, it added up to about 75 fights and there were almost completely even numbers of win, wins, loses, and draws. So it's like, you know, Eddie Miller says you couldn't be more mediocre than that. Presumably the Deschler when it was made was when he was on the upside of his, uh, of his career. Um, and that's why he had a drink named after him, but definitely, uh, the way his career eventually went up is where it works very well for Robert Ryan in this movie. Um, great, great film. Um, some some good supporting performances by um, uh, w Wallace Ford, who plays the uh, the ring doctor, I think, because he doesn't seem to be associated with any one fighter. He's kind of taking care of all of the fighters. Um, another another actor named uh, Percy Helton, who is one of these guys that you've seen, you know, a hundred times but you wouldn't know his name, but you always recognize him because he's very recognizable, very, has a very kind of gravelly, gravelly voice. Um, you probably know him best from, he was in uh, Miracle on 34th Street and he played the, the drunken Santa who gets fired at the beginning of the movie by Maureen O'Hara for, for being drunk right before the Macy's uh, Thanksgiving parade, and, which allows Edmund Gwynn to be, to be hired as a Santa. Anyway, Good film, really interesting look at the sport of boxing. Um, again, very good boxing scenes. Um, even though you know you have the kind of over the top thing, like there's a spot at, toward the end where Robert Ryan hits him so hard that he ends up falling over too, and which is almost a cliche in films like this. But the way it's done there, it works. And, and that's, that's kind of my litmus test for anything is, does it work? It, and it does work. So I'm going to take a quick break to set up, excuse me, to set up the drink. And we will be back to make the Deschler. I hope you stick around for it. Thanks. And we are back. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is probably something I should have been doing all along when I was making these videos. But this uh, drink features the... Um, uh, Dubonnet, which is a kind of a fortified wine similar to uh, vermouth. In fact, I think it even calls it, well, it calls it an aperitif, but it's kind of in that same category as, as vermouth. Um, when you have a new bottle that you've never tried before, it's probably not a bad idea to try a little bit of it to see what you think about it. Because when you make a, a drink, there may be something in that flavor that might put you off about the drink. It may be something that's really good about the drink and maybe you want to add more of it. So this will kind of give me a better idea of what this tastes like and whether, whether it's something that, you know, maybe to tweak this drink for my own personal taste, I'd want to either up the, the quantity of it or, or cut it down. pretty sweet. It's a little bit like a a menacing Manischewitz, if, if, if you can figure that. Um, the history of, of Dubonnet is that it has quinine in it, and it was developed um, by a French, uh, a Frenchman who, in, uh, in Africa, where France had colonies, uh, one of the few treatments for um, for malaria was quinine, and so they created he created Dubonnet as a way to make quinine um, more palatable. So uh, this has quinine in it, and that's what's going on behind that. So anyway, here we go. So what we're going to do is we are going. To, this is a stirred drink, so we're going to start by loading up our stirring mixing glass okay that's probably 
good. All right, now uh, we are going to do an ounce of rye whiskey. Oops, other side. Rye, an ounce of our dupin. Oh wait, that was two ounces of rye whiskey. Sorry, but at least I caught it. So two ounces of rye. So get the rest of that in there, and then our an ounce of our dubonnet. Okay, and then we have a bar spoon of Cointreau, and this is one of the reasons you will sometimes see, see me using uh, airline bottles, because if all I'm needing here is a, is a bar spoon, I'm going to use the smallest bottle I can find. So here's our Cointreau. Now my bar spoon's a little bit small, so I'm going to do two bar spoons of the Cointreau. And it didn't say, it says dashes of Pichot's Bitters, so I think I will do two. One, two. And there we go. And so we're going to give this a good stir. I did not turn my strainer up. I'm looking around to see whether it's in reach. It, it probably is not. So I'm going to kind of cheat and see if I can use my bar spoon to keep this use the bar spoon as a strainer. Give that a little bit more. Ooh, wait a second. I do see my strainer. And I'm going to let it rest, which Eddie recommends sometimes. So I'm going to sneak out. Voila, a strainer. So here we go. Kind of a reddish amber color. I like the color of it. And then for our garnish, we have both a lemon twist and an orange peel twist. So there we go. So, the Deschler. Hmm. I'm not really getting that that Manischewitz taste I was getting from the the straight Dubonnet. I am getting a slightly medicine-y taste here, um, but altogether not bad. I mean, probably not one of my top favorites of this, but um, I could drink this. In fact, I think I will drink this. So, from the back of Eddie Muller's Noir Bar, we're going to say cheers, and I hope you join, join me again next time. Thanks. Cheers.